Heyo friendos and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be recounting a very silly story from back in my college days. This is about a date gone wrong, a crazy what would be my mother-in-law. Had things progressed any farther? Thank goodness I didn't. Now my very next video that I come out with I will feature my Jeffree Star Cosmetics giveaway. So if you guys are excited for today's video then friendos just stay tuned. So guys, before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that if you see me use a product in today's video, I'm not going to be giving a lot of commentary on this because this is a long story. I'm going to try to get through that. So I will hold up the products that I'm using. The name will appear at the bottom of the screen. And just know that if it's used in this video, that it is something that I really enjoy that I would recommend to you all. So this story is a long one. It's from a few years ago, but it is super funny. I'm glad that you guys did choose this one. Although I must say, I feel like all of them would make you laugh. But this one, <laughs> this one is something special. So let's get into it. So guys, this one goes back to my college years. I've been in and out over the years. So this one is from a few years back. And this one has to do with a guy that I knew from my classes. I had had one class with him in the previous semester. And then I had one in this current semester before he finally asks me out. Now, the way that he goes about it is he friends me on Facebook and then he starts asking me to do things with him, but he never actually defines it as a date. So one of the first thing that he asked me to do is to go geocaching with him out in the woods with some people that I don't know. And I don't know, I, I felt weird about it. The whole time I just kind of had this weird vibe about him. Cause here's the thing you guys, he's super cute. He's very tall. It's hard to believe that he doesn't already have a girlfriend. But the whole time that I've been friends with him on Facebook, it's said that he's single and I never see him in a picture with any other girls. Part of me is like, what's wrong with this guy? <laughs> So yeah, for him to go two semesters, no girlfriend, I'm like, is there something going on here? I'm being pranked. Is he a player? You know, all these like little questions run through my mind. But he finally asked me to do something that I want to do, and that's go see a movie. And so this time I say yes, and it's very obvious that this is a date. He tells me that he can be over there at a certain time, and he makes it very clear that it's just going to be he and I. Okay, cool. So he comes to pick me up in his car, and everything is off to a really great start. He is super polite. He actually opens up the door for me. Like The Southern charm is great in this one. So we're having a good conversation on the way to the movies, or at least I thought we were. We sit down to watch the movie, and you know, at that point, you're just being quiet. Well, I keep hearing his phone buzzing during the movie. So I lean over and I'm like, hey, is something wrong? Your, your phone keeps buzzing. And he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to check it. So he looks down at his phone and he's like, I'm so sorry. I need to step out for just a second. I'm like, oh, okay. So he leaves the theater or he leaves the room, I should say, goes out, comes back in and he tells me, I am so sorry. My mom has had a flat tire, so I'm gonna need to leave to go help her. And we hadn't been long into the movie. I would say we were probably 15 minutes in. And I'm just thinking, what on earth? <laughs> you know, you have to question, is he being completely honest here? But I don't really know what to do. My sister knows that I'm out on a date. She knows where I'm at, so I can call her to come pick me up if need be. He tells me, you go ahead, you watch the movie since it's already paid for, and I'll come back and I'll pick you up at the end. So I text my sister. I let her know what's going on. I try to sit there and enjoy the movie, but I'm still just a little thrown because I was like, wow, we're off to such a great start. Was he really just having a bad time or something? So he does indeed come back to pick me up. He apologizes profusely. He keeps saying that his mom just really needed him. I didn't really ask a whole lot of questions about this. I had in my head, this guy is too nice to not already have a girlfriend. He probably has a girlfriend. Something, something's just not right here. But I didn't ask anything and I'm just kind of determined that this is the last time I ever go out with this guy. So I make it home and over the next couple of days, my friends and my sister asked me, you know, what came of the whole thing. And y'all know my sister, like she is a straight savage. So she's telling me, don't you ever go out with this guy again, block him. Don't ever talk to him again. <laughs> Something's not right here. Let it go. Just don't speak to him. 
Well, he keeps messaging. And I have this small little group of girlfriends that I've been hanging out with and they all insist, oh, he's such a nice guy. He's wonderful. Bless his heart for going to help his poor mother. And I'm thinking about it. I'm like, I, I guess it is a good quality that you would be willing to go and help out your mom like that. And his mom feels comfortable enough to call her son when she has an issue. My sister insists, she's like, this woman doesn't know how to change a tire. She can't call triple A. He tells her that he's on a date and she still insists that he come and help. How old is this woman? So, I don't know, I feel bad. My girlfriends at college are like, what if she's disabled or just scared? Maybe she's in a bad part of town. Maybe she really did need him. And I should have just inquired more to the guy about why he needed to leave. But I didn't want to be too rude. I don't know. It, it felt like something that you might could explain away, but maybe not. So he asked me out again. And it was on a weekend where my girlfriends from college were all leaving to go out of town, but I needed to stay behind because I had to work on Sunday. So I did want to go to the mall to go perfume shopping. At the time, I had this little Ralph Rocks by Ralph Lauren perfume that I had had for a while. <laughs> a good long while and I was about to give out of it. And if you guys remember that one, it's really similar to Sunfruit by Ellis Brooklyn. So if you had that back in the day, you know it's discontinued now, that's your girl, okay? But back to it. So I was gonna go look for a new perfume for me to try. So I told him, well, I wanted to go to the mall this weekend. And he said, that sounds great. We will do that, we'll go together. So I get ready, get dressed. I tell my sister that I'm going out with this guy and she tells me, you're going to regret it. There is something wrong with this dude, bro. Just don't do it. And I don't listen. So he shows up outside. I'm gonna do a little bit more contouring on this double chin. So he shows up outside and I see his car, it's parked in the shade. I go to get in and when I open up the door, I see that there's someone in the back seat and it's this woman and she sticks her head through the console. I see it's like a 50 year old Sophia Petrillo from Golden Girls, like dressed exactly like her, this button up blouse that's kind of silky. It has a pin at the very top, just very, very old school. And the woman says to me, hi, I'm David's mom. I don't know what to say. I'm so dumbstruck by this. I can't believe that this guy hasn't told me that his mom is coming with us. <laughs> and she says to me, I am so sorry to infringe on your date. You don't know how bad I feel, but I'm supposed to be meeting my friend Dina for lunch at the Olive Garden. And I can't drive my car because I had a flat tire a few days ago. I don't know what to do. I remember putting on my seatbelt and just wondering, okay, that was at least three days ago. Why has she not gotten this tire fixed? Maybe there was like money problems, but if money is that tight, should you be going out to eat? Probably not. Could she just not get anyone to put the tire on there? Maybe they had to order a special tire. My mind is just filled with a bevy of questions and answers to what is going on here. So she says that she's gonna meet Dina for lunch and I'm wondering, are we picking her back up after she's done? If so, we're not gonna get to stay at the mall for very long. So y'all, it was the longest eight minutes of my life. And I pretty much determined that when we got to Olive Garden, I was just gonna jump out of the car and start running and never look back. So on the way there, his mom starts talking to me about, I never shop at the mall. She talks so slow, you guys, but she just does not stop. There's no end to anything that she says. If her speech patterns could be defined in text, it would be no punctuation. So yeah, she just keeps on with, I never shop at the mall. I just feel like you get so much better deal shopping at Walmart. Plus every time I go there, there's some young girls in there walking around. You would think they were at a fashion show. I mean, I guess she's not wrong. <laughs> you do kind of see that at the mall, but I mean, I, I don't care what other people do. And right when we were pulling into the Olive Garden parking lot, I noticed there's no cars there. And that's when the <coughs> st 
starts, and I'm not talking about myself, I'm not talking about David, I'm talking about Sophia Petrillo. She starts coughing, gets out, goes to the front of the restaurant. We know that we know that this place has to be closed because there's no cars in the parking lot. And it says that it's closed for remodeling. Great. She calls Dina on her cell phone and tells Dina to just meet her at the mall because they'll just find something to eat there. And I'm trying to look at David's face to see what his reaction is to all this. But just from what I can see, you know, kind of giving him the side eye as as he's driving, he just doesn't really seem that moved by any of this. So then we have 12 long minutes to the mall. And when you think it can't get any weirdo, friendos, it just keeps getting weirder. So on this 12 additional minutes of weirdness where I'm stuck in the car with this woman, it becomes obvious that David has told her everything that he knows about me. And I'm just like, this is so weird. I've been out on one date with this guy and he's literally told her where I'm from, what my job is, where I work, how old I am, down to my birthday. And she told me that she put my birthday in her calendar. And the whole time while she's talking, she just keeps <coughs> In the back seat and I'm like oh god I'm gonna get sick and I need to work this Sunday. If you guys would have seen me back in college I was such a workaholic so me getting sick was the end of days for me. Then on the way there she tells us that Dina her friend is the same age as we are as in the same age as David and I which I thought was a little strange. I mean you can have friends of all ages I do too but I just can't imagine someone who's in their early 20s wanting to hang around this woman. So as we pull up to the entrance of the mall, he decides that he's gonna let the women out first and then he's gonna go park. Fair enough. I see Dina at the entrance and I know that it's Dina because she's dressed exactly like David's mom. She's got this short curly haircut. She's got on a silk button down shirt with pearls on the outside. And I feel like I'm living in the twilight zone. And as we are sprinting towards Dina, she says to me, I am so sorry I was coughing in the car. I am not sick, but your perfume is so musky and I don't do well with musk. When there's a perfume with musk in it, honey, I just about die. Honey, I just about die. So if you guys know what Ralph Rock smells like, there's no musky element in there. It's very like fruity, fresh, that kind of summer vibe. No musk in there whatsoever. I, I don't I don't have words for this woman. I don't say I'm sorry. I don't say anything. I'm just done. I'm done at this point. So I remember we're all standing outside in the hot sun because they didn't want to just walk inside. They want to wait for David. So it feels like another eternity. David finally gets there and we walk in the mall. His mom says that she and Dina are going to go grab some food at the food court and we can just go do our own thing. So David tells her that we're on our way to GameStop first. And so that's where we go. And I'm really anxious to hear from David at this point. Oh wait, I forgot. I forgot an important detail. So when we congregate with Dina, the first thing that his mom does, and mind you, I don't even know her real name yet, but she goes, Dina Morrison, I would like you to meet David's girlfriend, Laurel. What's your last name? And so I say my last name. Although I can tell already that I'm going to regret just giving out any more info to this woman. So as David and I make our way to GameStop, we're not in there for very long at all. We're just looking around. I don't really want to call my sister, but there's a voice inside of me that's screaming, just go ahead, call your sister, tell her to come get you. But the other part of me was like, don't be rude, just get through the date and then just let him down easy later. Cause this guy is overjoyed. He is clearly having a great day and I'm trying to sort of bring him down to earth. I'm trying to make him see that this is strange and inappropriate. So at least when he goes out with another girl, he doesn't make the same mistakes and bring his mom along. So while we're in GameStop, I'm attempting to get him to see the light. And I ask him, David, does this, does this seem normal to you? Then I feel my phone buzz. I'm wondering if it's my sister. I look at my phone. This woman has sent me a friend request. It had not been two minutes that it took her to leave and find me on Facebook and send me a friend request. And I show it to David 
And I'm like, David, doesn't this seem just a little much? Doesn't this seem like a little much to you? And he just keeps on and on about what a wonderful woman his mom is. She just wants to be friends with everyone. He's the sweetest mom in the whole world. And he's not saying this to me like, like, no, you're wrong. He's just, he's just in his own little bubble. He doesn't even realize that I'm giving him any sort of critical feedback. So whatever. So we're not in there for very long at all. And what do you know? Dina and his mom are back. I'm not joking, you guys. It had not been 10 minutes. I don't know if they like just scarfed down their food, if they didn't eat at all, if they just went away to themselves to gossip. I don't know. It was very strange. So when they show up at GameStop, we are checking out and his mom says, where are you guys planning on going next? And I just basically scream out, Sephora perfume shopping. Cause I'm like, bro, she's not gonna wanna go in there. I know she's not. Then she says, great, we'll go too. So at that point, I slip out of GameStop and I go to the bathroom and I confess to my sister that I'm on this date and it's not going well and I would really appreciate it if she would come and pick me up. Well, it's gonna take a little while for her to get there, <laughs> but she assures me she is on the way. So we go into Sephora and I don't remember what perfume it was that I bought that day, but I remember I spent a hundred dollars inside Sephora. And Dina and Sophia Petrillo are, they're in there, but I don't really see them buying much. I want to say that Dina bought some cleansers or something. We get out of the store and Dina, with the same accent and everything, says, I just can't believe I spent so much in there. I went way over my budget. I spent $30. And they knew I had spent like $100. I just, I don't say anything at this point. I, I'm not really talking to anybody. I'm not talking to David. I'm being polite. If he asks me something, I answer. I'm really hoping that this guy is gonna pick up on the fact that this is not the way to have a date with someone. And if something crazy like this happens, you actually need to apologize. You need to apologize to your date and make sure this never happens again. But I digress. So the date progresses, unfortunately. His mom says, I think we should go to Victoria's Secret. I, I think we should go there. The last place on planet Earth I wanna go with this crazy lady is Victoria's Secret. But at this point, I am done. As we are walking to Victoria's Secret, his mom is actually distracted with Dina over something. They're looking at how some girl is dressed and saying that she needs to put on more clothes. Okay, so while they're having this conversation, I tell David, something is not right here. Your mom is making this super awkward. This is not a good date. I just say that to him. And David tells me, don't worry, I just feel like it's awkward because you guys have really never met before. But once you get to know her, she she's an amazing, amazing lady. And you know what, David, maybe you're right. Maybe she is a super amazing lady, but you should not be bringing her on your second date with someone. So when we arrive at Victoria's Secret, Dina makes an announcement to everyone. Oh, all I need to get is some white plain cotton underwear. I'm just all out of underwear and I, I just need a few pair. And then his mom clearly wants to talk to David and she says, you know, there's just this perfumey smell that's coming out of there. And I'm just, I'm afraid it's gonna aggravate my throat even more than it's already aggravated. So cool. I don't have to shop in Victoria's Secret with her. So I don't really have anything that I'm looking for in Victoria's Secret. So I'm just trying to kill time till my sister arrives. And I start out in the beauty section and I remember I was looking at Love Spell. Do you guys remember Love Spell? I don't know if they still have it or not. I don't really shop at Victoria's Secret, but they had a Love Spell and it smelled sort of like Skittles. It smelled like a candy. And I was sampling a few different things, but I remember I was holding Love Spell in my hand and it was a lotion. And I look up and I see Dina staring at me. <gasps> and when I make eye contact with her, she like quickly diverts her eyes and pretends to be looking at something else. Oh, great. <laughs> so everywhere I would go in Victoria's Secret, she'd be on the other side, but staring like a crazy person. And she kept getting worse and worse at it the longer we were in there as far as the spying. She just kept making herself more and more obvious. Cause she'd be staring at me 
and then she would look down at her phone, she would text, and then I could see his mom outside the store with David, and it makes it clear she's texting someone, probably Dina. So then that's when the devil on my shoulder starts talking, and I can't control it at that point, you guys. I have lost control of myself at this point. I go and I look for the raunchiest outfit that I could find in Victoria's Secret. Something with some cutouts over the boobies. You guys oh know my. what I'm talking about. Not some nice little silky dress. No, I went for the big guns. And I grabbed that outfit and I marched with it to the very front of the store, to right in front where David and his mom were standing. And I say, David, what do you think of this? I love it. And David doesn't know what to say, but he's just like, oh yeah. And his mom is so mad. She, she is so mad at this point. She just gives him a look like, how dare you? So then all of a sudden, Dina wants to leave. She couldn't get out of there fast enough. Dina says to me, All right, you you can go check out. I didn't find the underwear that I was looking for in here, but we'll meet you outside. So I pretended to buy this stupid lingerie, but really all I did was buy some little frivolous lotions and a t-shirt from Pink. But before I leave the store, I asked the associate, what is your most musky of fragrances? And she pointed me to one, and I don't remember the name of it, but I covered myself in that. I made sure I was the musk queen as I left the store. I was not going to let this lady get near me when I came out of the store. So I came out, I told David, I really found some perfumes that I liked in there as well. And he's just happy-go-lucky. He's just having a great time. He tells me how happy he is that me and his mom have finally gotten to meet. And I just, I'm over it. I just, okay. Okay. okay, and by now my sister has texted me and she's outside. I have not told David that I am leaving with my sister, but I tell him, hey, I'm gonna run to the bathroom. And I know his mom would have tried to have come with me, except for I'm in an armor set of musk perfume. So I make my way to the bathroom and go out the entrance and get in the car and drive away. I turn my phone off. I'm sure David tried calling and I blocked him on Facebook and surprisingly, he never showed up for class again. So I never heard from David again. So like I said, he didn't show up for class. I never inquired to anyone about what happened to him. So I just assumed that he and Dina got married and lived a very happy life together. <laughs> and if not, I'm sure he's at home with his mom, just living his best life. Okay, I'm gonna finish doing my eyes off of camera and I'll be right back to you guys. Okay guys, I changed my background to something a little bit more appropriate. And then I realized I had not done the corners of my eyes. So let's go ahead and do that. Bro, what if David died? Um. I don't think he's dead. <laughs> okay, so theoretically, if he died, how did he die? You think his mom like hugged him too tight and he suffocated? No, bro, he's gotta be married to Dina. I still don't really understand if Dina was just entirely a spy or if Dina was someone who she was hoping to hook up with him. I really don't know. It was just weird that she was the same age as us. That's the only reason why I think she might have wanted them to get together. So friendos, weigh in. What do you think happened to David? So I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm bad at talking and putting on makeup at the same time. I need to actually put on a little bit more pigment over here of that orange to kind of carry it out farther. I'm gonna go handle that real quick. And I do wanna hear from you guys. Would you have left the date? Would you have announced to everyone that you're leaving? Would you have just escaped like I did? No, it probably would have been nicer of me to just tell them that I'm leaving, but I don't know. I was so done with everything that I just felt like I didn't really owe them an explanation at that point, especially after a lot of the rude things that his mom had said to me. I'm trying to remember what they all were, Oh yeah, at one point she had said to me, you know, boys don't like it if you wear too much makeup. And I'm gonna be honest, that was pretty much a downgrade day for me. I wasn't wearing nearly as much as what I usually do. So yeah, on the regular, she would not have been very happy with me. And here's the thing, again, I wouldn't have been so upset with David that I just left if he would have at least acknowledged that this was so inappropriate. And I could just tell that if I continued to see him, even though 
though he was Mr. Nice, Mr. Polite and everything, that's what the rest of my life would have been like, just hanging out with his mom all the time up in my business. So friendos, let me know in the comment section down below if you've ever dated a mama's boy, what happened? I want to hear your stories as well. Also, let me know if you've ever just pulled an escape move like that. I think that's the only date where I didn't announce that the date is over when it had gone terribly. I think every other date I've went on, I at least said goodbye to the person at the end. So friendos, thank you guys so much for choosing to spend your free time here with me and to hear me blather on about the super weird story about this very awkward date that I had back in my college years. I very much hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you will come back for more. Again, the other two that I gave for you guys to vote on, they're good stories too. So I may come back and tell you guys that if you guys do end up enjoying this one. And now I'm going to wish you a phenomenal rest of your day. Please subscribe if you have not done so already, because if not, we'll both have to live in the summer of never knowing what could have been. All right, guys, have a fabulous day. Bye.